Hello, and welcome to The Pond, the strange corner of YouTube, where we do deep dives, reviews, analyze Disney villains, and highlight cows. Yeah. <laughs> I was not expecting that. <laughs> and we are here with the one and the only Newt. Face reveal at 100,000 subscribers. We want those subscribers, and we want those subscribers to match our views. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's awesome. This is the first video to break it. And it happens to be R, R, R. Yes, people. That's because of you, the subscribers, and the people who pass by. You do deserve that respect. You deserve to highlight the passerby. You're the you're ones that make YouTube happen. Hell yeah. Am I right? Come on, Newt. Am I right? You're right. Yeah, we're pumped up. And we're going to keep on pumping because we are going to finish the review of Karasari. We did that review last year and we called it a potential seven. Our highest number, a seven. But we don't go throw it out immediately. We're not Hollywood. No. We wait an entire year and we watch these movies way more than once and to analyze and make sure it is worthy of the seven. Or is the seven worthy of the movie? And we're gonna find out. So strap on in and make sure you're ready because you're going down on a big one. So let's do this thing! Sorry after that big intro, I need to calm down. <laughs> Woo! Now you may be asking, what is a, what makes a seven out of seven? It has three requirements. Rewatchable, deep diveable, and magical. We'll get to that, we'll talk about that magic later on. But right now, I wanna go out of order and talk about deep diveable and see if Karasari is deep diveable. And it has an unfair advantage than most average movies. Excellent. Because there's two forms of movies, fiction and nonfiction. This is nonfiction, though it is very fantastical. And I love this movie for that. This is based on a true story. This really happened. 22 men versus 10,000 in one fort. Okay, that really happened? Wow, you want to learn more? And that is one of the great advantages of movies like this. Yes, it's based on a real event, but when you're done, you have to fulfill the goal. You want the audience to know more. If you don't do that, you failed as a movie. You failed at telling this story, but this succeeded. I'm an average American. I know squat nothing when it comes to other cultures in the world. I want to learn. I am trying to learn. I want to learn, because why? It's fun to learn. And knowing is half the battle. I feel like I've been robbed. 22 against 10,000? How come the average movie buff, nay, the average storyteller, isn't telling me this? How has no one noticed this? Um, please sir, I want some more. It's that amazing that this happened. And the fact that you're curious, you want to know more, that is a cheat code. This movie achieves because it executed it right. <laughs> Kudos to you, yeah! And also, it's more than just, it has that cheat code that this really happened. There's another side to this. This is a different religion. I'm a member of the uh, LDS, the Latter-day Saints, AKA Mormons. And this is about the uh, Sikhs and more highlighting to them. And honestly, I can feel it. When they talk about their gurus and their lessons that this, the main character is teaching and showing off his religion, I am just intrigued. A, I see so many similarities between him and me. B, I'm learning something absolutely new. I know squat diddly yacht nothing. Actually, this was the first time I felt introduced to this religion and this culture. It is intriguing. 
And this is probably a great representative of it. And I am going to be brutally honest. There are times in this movie where I feel like it is something very spiritual. And this movie does it way more than once. And there's this beautiful moment where he talks. And I don't want to spoil, but I just want to highlight that moment that me of a different religion and them of a different religion, I felt like I was in a holy place. And that holy place happened because of the reverence they were filming and acting and how we both can communicate on that scale. Beautifully done. That is something a deep diveable, I think very few movies can achieve because of that reverence. Do you know how hard that is to achieve that in a film? Because Christian movies, they, we try to do it and face it, we come out more hammy than pre and preachy than just letting the silence communicate. Am I right, Newt? I could agree there, yeah. Too many um, seminary classes where all of us, even the teachers going, I can't take it, it's so hard, I'm not trying to, I'm trying my best not to laugh. Mm -hmm. Am I right? How many tr PTSD of humor do we have because of those movies? Ugh, way too many to count. <laughs> Eight cows, Mr. Harris. You have to be a member of my church to understand that, and you have to be exposed to that movie too much. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I have! Come on, we need to up our game. We just barely have a chance and yet we're doing nothing compared to the levels this movie has achieved. Thank you. I wanna say thank you to the directors and actors and the writers, everyone. Thank you for achieving that. Christian directors, study Karasari. If you want to be spiritual and yet communicate beautiful and reverence, study this movie. It's more than just the story. It's the actions and the purposes and the characters. Do that. So that rant aside, it is very wealthy and deep diveable in many different forms. So yeah, that's a big one to achieve. And now the hardest and easiest thing to achieve, rewatchable. Bad movies can achieve this. Good movies cannot achieve this. I'm looking at you, Citizen Kane. Burn! <laughs> yeah, I said it. Why I'm being controversial about this, this is something Hollywood and some writers are forgetting. Rewatchable. How to achieve legendary status is not the box office. It is your audience at home. There is where the power lies. Not your big screen, it's the little screen. That is where power comes from. Movies that weren't our classics because of that small screen. I need to see this more than once. And within the year, I've seen it three times. And one of them was with the Newt and his wife. Yep. Okay, he said something there. Yay! Trying to get him more involved. This is something we need to achieve. And this movie, I never got sick of it. Actually, I, can't, I was able to understand it better. Why is it this movie has two halves? The first half is more lighter, funner, and it has that, what we Americans call the Indian stereotype movie. It's music and song and dance. Well, there is a strategic reason why it's like that. This is the lighter side. This is the side that's just to butter us up and make us feel good be and make us feel happy. Cause why? It just feels good to be happy. Am I right, Newt? Yep. But then comes the second half of the movie. I've been traumatized. It's gonna be that heavy. That is where the spiritual stuff is gonna come out of the wazoo. That is where the heavy stuff and communication comes out. And that is when it's 22 against 10,000. The characters you like or characters you're going uh, with, it's gonna get brutal. It's gonna get harsh. And I'm, it's hard that I'm not gonna spoil, but yet you can grab a history book. You can go into the documentaries on throughout YouTube where they can tell you more. 
and you can just study and learn and you can know the ending. But A, I recommend that you do that, and B, still watch the movie. They communicated that perfectly, and it is just gut-wrenching. And I don't mean it in the verbiage of gut-wrenching. This movie feels like it just grabbed, got a fist, punched it into my stomach, and started twisting and pulling my guts and said, at least we're not Sudaru Dam. And I'm going, I know you're not, but it still hurts. You're not Sudaru Dam, but oh, I needed that type of present. But you do the ending good. It's that brutal, but it, communica it communicates that brutality in a loving way. And it does it very well. And it's not the point that you're Joker. Okay, you're a 7 out of 7, but I'm not going to watch you again. No, it's not like that. It's, you're an amazing movie, and actually I wouldn't mind watching you again. You make heroes heroes. You show legends that they are legends. These are men that are beyond human. They achieved what few human beings in human history have achieved. It communicates that. And you're thankful for it. You just look at these characters and go, on the levels of all, every single human man on planet Earth, on storytelling, we're not giving you the man card. We hope you can give us the man card. Damn! Now that is the second half of the movie. Well done and perfect. So it wins in that regard. Too many rants aside, but it had to be said. Magical. Huh, what is that description? It is the description of the story is so good that we, the audience, liked it so much we want to spread the word. It's me and you going to friends and family and saying, watch this again. You're going to wa watch this and you're going to like it. And I mean you're going to like it. And we're watching our friends and family in the corner of our eyes because we're still watching this movie. It's that good. But we're paying attention still because guess what? He's smiling when I'm smiling. Yes, he's laughing when I'm laughing. Yes, they're cheering. They're shocked. They're feeling all the emotions I'm feeling right now. It's magic. We caught it. And when we're done, we're discussing the movie. We're loving the movie. And then when we, they meet their friends and I meet more friends, we do the thing all over again. That is the magic. It is to spread the word. We are being missionaries of the story because it's that good of a movie it's that good of a story and does Karasari have that um i'm talking to you right more than that i'm not i'm talking to you with passion this is something i want more people to watch i'm talking to you america take that snobbery out of your rear end and just give in and watch a foreign movie that has some song and dancing occasionally but it's all about the emotion. It's all about the story. It's communicating something that really happened and giving its reverence to that. Just nut up and shut up and watch this. But it's near to three hours long. I'm not so sure I have a time of day for that. Fine time. It's that good of a movie. It's entertaining, it's heart-wrenching, it beats you to a pulp, there's so much depth to it. It is reverence, it is beauty, it is fun, it is charming and violent at its best. But it's not dumb violence. There's a point to it. You know, some of it may be a little cringe. That's part of the deal. And this movie sells it. Just watch it. Look at the passion I have. This is, this is me pleading to watch it. Does it fulfill magical? Oh, yes. It fits all three criteria, and I am locked and loaded for it. This is a 7 out of 7. Nay, more than a 7 out of 7. This is a Kumara Smile Award. What is that? It's me loving a movie so much it makes me want to smile. Any number in our ranking system can have that. Most of them are fives, actually, but I don't care because I love them. And this movie I want to have in my library. It's that good. Just due to budget restraints of my own personal life, that is preventing me to get Karasari and RRR on 
physical form, not digital. So that way, if some streaming service pulls them off, guess what? I still have it. That's how good this movie is. And that's how good you need to watch it. And, oh my gosh, yes. Yes, it's that good, people. And I hope you watch it. And I wait till that time comes. So until then, this is the Bullfrog and the Newt signing out. What? Wow, it was so good.